So for those of you guys who do say, oh, well, I can eat in moderation, put it to the test. Put your moderation to the test and be honest with yourself about your rate of consumption. It's a slippery slope. Are you slipping into poorer habits where you're consuming these things more often than you think you should? Do you find that your sweet tooth is a little bit more active when you have, you know, sweets like at your disposal? Yeah, that one little piece of chocolate at night is not going to to hurt you. But then you got to be honest with yourself. Is that one piece of chocolate at night turning into an extra packet or two of sugar in your coffee in the morning? You know, how is that one piece of chocolate that's so innocent in and of itself cascading into other habits? And that's what most people miss with moderation. It's not just the food in and of itself that's bad. It's how is the food affecting the other decisions that you make in life? And how are all of those decisions um, culminating into something that is deteriorating your health? Hey, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Culture of Health podcast. Um, In this episode, we talk a little bit about, well, we talk a lot about moderation and setting up your home environment for success. That means getting rid of toxic food that is not contributing to optimal health and adding in more things that help to build your body, to help build your immunity, to help regulate your blood sugar, to help improve your focus. Um, You do these things with real food. Uh, Now, I know that time is often a limiting factor and sometimes budget is too. And when that's the case, you have to look for outside support that sometimes comes in supplement form to help you cover your nutritional basis. And although we are very well versed in the kitchen and we know what we're doing um, as far as feeding ourselves to meet our micronutrient needs, sometimes we don't have the time. Um, And when that happens, that's where I like to introduce AG1 by Athletic Greens into our routine. Basically, AG1 is comprehensive nutrition. It's 75 vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and whole food sourced ingredients that helps me pretty much establish my day on the right foot. Um, sometimes I've noticed more energy after drinking it, a little bit of brain fall from the morning, get to clear it up. Um, but most importantly, I realized that no matter how busy I get throughout the day, I've met my nutritional needs. And that's such a powerful way to go into your day because you've done the best thing you can for your body. And now your body can carry you through some important moments and helping you make some important decisions, which is extremely important. I'm going to say important three times, which is extremely important for being able to successfully moderate your diet when you're out here in these streets and passing all these unhealthy food options. So it cuts down some of that food noise and allows you to make smart decisions. So if you're ready to cut down on some of that food noise, make some better decisions for your health, I'm inviting you to give Athletic Greens a try. You can do so by going to athleticgreens.com slash TCHP to get your hands on some AG1 and hopefully experience the same benefits that I have. Hey, you all, welcome to another episode of the Culture of Health podcast. My name is Austin and my co-host is Fantasia. And this podcast is about teaching you how culture influences health. And boy, do we have a good example of that today. So the podcast episode today is about moderation. And the reason why this topic is brought up is because I made a few unseemingly controversial posts on Instagram that garnered a lot of negative attention. And um, I think it's a good opportunity for us to kind of break down what moderation should look like, what it looks like in the standard American home, and then like what our goal is for our family. Um, first of all, the, t- the two posts that I made uh-huh. were not controversial. One was me pouring some juice down the drain. I mean, apparently it was very controversial. What's controversial about that? So the first one was about juice down the drain. And the second one... The second one was me talking about how I was helping my 10-year-old son moderate his intake of Takis. So he had just came back from hanging out with his friends. He had eaten a bunch of chips while he was with them. He came home and continued to eat chips. I just simply asked, you know, what's up? What you going to do with the rest of them chips, you know? So I made a post about it, and I received a swarm of comments talking about how 
I am the worst dad ever. <laughs> how, uh, how our children are going to have eating disorders. Um, man, if, if you have some time, go to uh, my Instagram page at Austin underscore McGuffey. I think it's dot. Dot Austin dot McGuffey. And look for that Takis post, man, and go through them comments. You should pin them so people <laughs> they know where to find them. I'm just kidding. I don't actually. I prefer if you could just turn your comments off. Okay, I think we got the point. We understand where people are in the world. Um, My thing is, I feel like if people if we don't respond to comments, mm-hmm. it fosters like uh, a sense of a false sense of authority. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like. In the real world, outside of social media, if someone was to come up to me face-to-face and say, hey, you're a bad father and mm-hmm. your children are going to have an eating mm-hmm. disorder, I would have an opportunity to respond yeah. to correct their perspective. I understand. If necessary, you know? I know. It's just really... But when people respond and they just feel like, oh, yeah, I got that off my chest, and then you get like three of your other teenager friends to like your post, and then you feel validated and you're like, yeah, I was right. You're not, you didn't learn anything from this interaction. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I don't I feel like that's not fair, especially for the kids. Like y'all don't know jack squat about raising uh children. You don't know anything about children's nutrition and how the foods that they eat today yeah. affect their lives. And so if I don't respond to you and tell you that you're wrong, then you just you know what I'm saying? You just go about go your along day. thinking you're right. Yeah. I get it. I mean, I get it. It's. I think it's a lot to consider. You know, I think that you you received a lot of good, like support. I did. In the beginning, or even just people saying, hmm, I bet there were a lot of people who may or may not have commented at all and said, like, that thought to themselves, you know what? This was good. This was an example that I can take in my household with my kids that I actually have. And teach them, you know, and have a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what was missing in context was just like the relationship that we have with our children. Let's talk about that. With each other, with with our our children. children. I mean, we I think we are very we've been very intentional about having like an open door policy. I mean, our children are still relatively young, right? Mm-hmm. So they're not, they have not entered true like teenager years and all that kind of stuff and everything that comes with it. Mm-hmm. But what, they're four, six, eight, and 10 years old. So they're still kids and they're still influenced by their friends. They still want to do what they want to do. But I think the way that we navigate those conversations with them makes them feel welcome to right. at least even address it. I mean, they- And empowered. We, and empowered because- we get rebuttals. This mm-hmm. is not a do as I say household. Right. You know, there's a foundation of respect. Yeah. But this is like a hey, if you have something to say, you Now's right. your chance. Well, they already know they're gonna say it, <laughs> right, and we yeah. know that they're gonna give it. You yeah. know, and we're here to have a conversation. Like it's a two way thing. You yeah. Know, with yeah. them, um, and I think that's where a lot of this starts. And honestly, I really feel bad for all those people who had so many negative things to say. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, they should be addressed. Yes, we can correct them. But at the heart of it, it feels like you don't have people in your life who care about you. Right. You know, and where's the love? Ain't no love. Because what they're saying, (laughs) how they're saying your children are going to treat you, maybe that's how they feel about their parents. Yeah, yeah. So it's a lot of projecting going on. Yeah. Which is like, okay, so like looking at it from a compassionate standpoint, that's fine. I'm sorry. That's all I got. That's really, that's what I'm here for in the world, apparently. so neutral. I used to want to smoke. I used to come with it, but I'm not. That's not what I am. Soft life. Yes. I just feel like, you know, regardless of, whether or not that was your experience, I think that people should be pushed to to learn some emotional intelligence and realize that you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, of this 30-second clip, you've arrived at, at this judgment. So many conclusions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you say, like, what are all the things to take into consideration about how we're raising our children? Number one, we have a very open-door policy. Number two, they have the most flexibility of any child that I know, they come and go as they please. They leave the uh, go into the kitchen, leave the kitchen with snacks and and the things that they want. Um, they have an opportunity to make decisions for themselves, mm-hmm. um, and those are the ways that we celebrate their autonomy as children. But you know, I, maybe for the average person, we are a little bit more strict about what, what they, they eat. eat. Yeah. yeah, and it's not even in like an overbearing like you're gonna do this because it's what I say. Mm-hmm. It's more so like a collaborative effort. Like, hey. You guys, 
how do you want to feel? Mm -hmm. And those words are typically, I want to feel good. I want to have energy. I want to have a clear mind. These aren't words that they say. Yeah, I'm um, say. Yeah, they're not saying this. <laughs> I mean, they... But it's an understanding. Yes. We know they want to feel good. Yeah. You know? And we know that when they feel bad, it's, you know, they feel it. Yeah. And I sometimes feel responsible for that. Like, when they have days where they, you know, like a couple of days ago, where they're yeah. out and drinking Sprite and having donuts and all these things, then the very next day, everyone's like... Lethargic. Yeah, lethargic. Yeah. They don't want to clean up. And so but they never want to clean up. Oh, well, true. But, but they didn't have the energy to clean up, so it was no, it was no point in us even pointless. forcing it. Right. But that was all because of the dietary choices they made the day before, and so it was cool for us to have an opportunity to, to tie those experiences in to what they ate. But then it's also like you could understand why we approach nutrition the way that we do, because. I think the average person looks at it and it's either you don't want to gain weight mm -hmm. or you don't want to get a disease. Yeah. And all those those two those two things are very real. There's a spectrum of other things that you and I would like to avoid when it comes to raising the kids. Like for example, our daughters, you know, they tend to be a little bit more emotional than our sons. And when they are tired, groggy, moody, it makes our life hard. Yeah. And oftentimes it's a result of what they eat, you know? What they eat, how much sleep they've had, water. I mean, just all the factors, you Everything. know. It, yeah, it's, it's so important. And I, but I think people don't understand. I think that's where a lot of this, you know, the projection comes from. Just so many things, these baseless arguments. It's because people don't understand. You don't have the knowledge. And right. instead of people saying, you know what, I don't know. I yeah. don't know much about nutrition. I really don't know. I'm just kind of guessing here. They go until you... You know what I'm saying? Like, this is, no, like, like, we're not to say that we're experts in the field. And it's not even coming with that energy. It's just like, I, I think we truly care about the information. So it hits a little different. I would us. say that we are. I know we're experts in the field, yeah. but I'm just saying we don't come across like, Ooh, yeah, we don't try hey, to like, it's like, we're trying to be very relatable, right, you know, right, right, but right. I don't, but people, um, I don't know. It's like, it's like you overstep your boundaries. Like yeah. just I mean social media. And have a little bit that. of humility. There is none. Because there everybody is, none. is an authority on That's social crazy. media. That's crazy. Yeah. Because based on your personal experience, exactly. which is fine, but don't allow your personal experiences to guide other people in the wrong direction. Right. You know, just because something may have happened in your life and your parent or whatever your background was, doesn't mean that you should want and wish that for my children. Right. Stop saying my kids. <laughs> Are gonna have an eating disorder. Yeah. Stop saying my kids are gonna hate us. Dozens of com dozens it's of crazy. comments. It's crazy. Our kids are gonna hate us. Our kids are gonna leave. Our kids are gonna pull the plug on me when I get into a car accident. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but like seriously, what about you know the world that we really want to create? Like it is totally possible, and it takes intentionality. And I think in this day and age, there's so many things that are like just affecting us that we don't even know it exactly. you know so it's really like you can't blame these people it's almost like you blame the systems that create this this weird world that we kind of live in yeah but if we contribute to the systems we allow the systems to, know, to thrive it's, a, it's like a subtle thing it's, it's very it's, subtle but at the end of the day it boils down to personal responsibility yeah and there are a lot of comments uh people who are saying that oh well the reason why i don't have self-control right now is because of the relationship with food that I inherited from my parents. And it's like, bro, if you are uh, an a older teenager or a young adult and you're still blaming your parents for your eating problems, that's a lack of self-accountability, period. And people will call that victim blaming. People will say that it's too harsh. It's the truth. If you are an adult and you have not sought out the resources to, to heal from the quote-unquote trauma that you went through that led to your eating disorder... Yeah then the problem is you. I think a lot of times it's, it's a, it's a probably, those people probably experienced a culmination of things right. growing up. It probably just wasn't one thing, you know? But like you said, seek out the resources. I mean, I know that's even like accessibility and all those things may be a challenge, right? Um, but I mean, therapy, you know, guidance, counseling, like all these things, like you have to be on your journey yeah. because just, you know, and, and you might still be struggling with things and that's fine. But I think just um, if you're on your healing journey, then you would, I don't know, you kind of act accordingly. And today's just so nice. 
Okay, sorry. No, no, no. I just, I, I it's good. It's, it's like good. Balance it is. You're softening this up because <laughs> it could be very bad for me saying what I'm saying. Yeah. But I really, I, I strongly. I know. I think there are people who fit into all these different categories, right? There are some people who, who need to hear what you're saying. Yeah, like right? you are not, you are not a victim. You're not a victim. But our society, for so many reasons, uh, wants us to continue to be victims. Yeah, so it's, yeah. It's, not it's like really when you identify as yes. a victim, and that's there's yep. nothing. And there's you nothing do that cool for the rest that. of your life. Yeah, you know, like you wearing a badge. Like I, there was someone who comments in, like, "Well, I have two eating disorders." Like, okay, yeah. you know, like that's that's. <sighs> I'm not sure what the correct words are to say, but, you know, I feel like people can be on your journey, but be making progress on your journey. Yeah. You and know? don't identify with with what it is that is holding you back. Yeah. yeah. That's not cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It can't be very empowering. Yeah. And that. I will say that my ex- I don't have an extensive knowledge base on eating disorders. Yeah. You know, I'm not familiar with all the different triggers and same. Um, stuff. So this is, you could take this with a grain of salt if you like to. These are just my raw thoughts, our raw thoughts. Um, but ultimately, for all the people on the internet who had an issue with me teaching my son how to read food labels on the back of a Taki bag. Um, From a sense of like education and like empowerment. Like yeah. I'm trying to help you. This is part of you becoming a man. Yep. Part of you becoming like, I don't know, a person, a responsible citizen. Yeah. Like, those things are, they're not, obviously, they're not normal. Right. But they should be. Right. You know? 100%. And so kudos to all the people out there who are trying, doing the best that they can to raise healthy, whole people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's very important. Yeah. And people who can do it with, with a, a self-directed approach. Yeah. And it's going to vary. Some of our kids are better at this, better at this than others. Um, but, like... Teaching your child, because they are going to grow up to be adults one day. I think one of the common misconceptions is, oh, like one of the comments that got hundreds of likes was, mm-hmm. let your kid be a kid. Mm-hmm. And it's like, why does junk have to be a part of my child's experience? Yeah. Like, this kid is running around outside for hours out of the day. He plays with all of his friends. There's sleepovers, birthday parties, um, video games online. Like, they're living their best lives. Yeah. Are are they not having a childhood worth remembering because we don't keep juice in our house and because we don't have takis in the cabinet? I don't know. I think that's that's just a it's so um, sentimental uh, or we should say like nostalgic, right? For a lot of people, it's like oh that's what we did growing up, and I feel like I have some of those things maybe regarding other stuff, not really junk food, right? But I think I think that's one point that people try to make, like it's like nostal like. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's I weird. Just, I feel like even if it is nostalgic, if it is very it's clear. It's detrimental. Yeah. If it's clear that it's detrimental to your health, that's like me saying, oh, well, I have nostalgia from drinking water out of the water hose outside. Yeah. Would I like, let my kid do that knowing what I know about the things that are in our in our water? In like, the water. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Okay. Now I'm like, let the kid be the kid. <laughs> I, I mean, mean, yes, the water is polluted, whatever. But, like, I don't, I guess if that was, like, a constant, if y'all just did that. Yeah, no, we just so did that. So many things are different now, you know? I think that's another thing. So many things are different. I don't know. I mean, because the argument is, like, well, I turned out okay. No, but you probably didn't. I don't know. I mean, that was me. What you mean? <laughs> not you. Oh. I'm talking about the people who are saying that. Right, exactly. You may not have. And that's and that's And that's a and really so good it's point. like where do we go back? Where do we start to make the change? Yeah. Because if we identify, if we could relate it to the food that you ate, then it'll be like, Oh, you right. know what? Or, you know, growing up and living like a more sedentary life and yeah. not being active. Like there's so many things. There are a lot of different things, but I think one of the big factors um, that contributes to people missing out on this conversation of moderation is they miss the signs yeah. of moderation gone wrong. Right. You don't attach your moderation to your mood. Yeah. You don't attach your moderation to your energy levels. You don't attach your moderation to your ability to perform in school or yeah. sports or whatever the case right. is. You just think that if you go to the doctor and they tell you that you're okay, then your moderation is going fine. Yeah. And that's not necessarily the case. Yeah. And so when you look at children, who are going through crucial stages of development, you don't want to introduce too much of anything that's harmful to their bodies. And the, the tricky question is, 
nobody knows where too much is right. on the spectrum. Yeah. You don't know when you can have too much red 40 yeah. in order for it to create uh, ADHD in your brain. You don't know when you can have too much um, seed oils yeah. in order for it to cause some disruption in your gut. So to me, it just feels like the safe option is to create some safeguards in your home to make it harder for your children to consume that stuff. Yeah. And it's not going to yep. be like foolproof. Like we said, they're going to go out into the world and right. they're going to do their thing, which right. they do. Um, but the best strategy that we can put into place is to control their immediate environment, right. which is yeah. our home, you know? Yeah, that's real. That's 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 very true. And what is moderation anyway? Because I feel like having something, you know, like uh, what's what's an example? Having some ice cream, and I'm not trying to like demonize any type of food. Right. right. Let's, we're just because we've had about, it all. We've, yes, we've had it all in our house. Talking about whatever, but if you have some in there and you're eating it, just say just one time a day, but it's still every day. Mm -hmm. You know that stuff affect it. It's like um, it what is. It? compounds yes it compounds over time and it has an effect on you yes you know so that is that really it feels like moderation because i'm not like eating all the ice cream at one time mm -hmm. i'm not eating it all day mm -hmm. but i'm eating it every day and i'm looking forward to having mm -hmm. it every day and i and i know that feels like okay but isn't that okay but it i think it's a thin line it's, I it's think a very that, thin line i think that if it was okay we wouldn't be looking at 93% of Americans that are metabolically unhealthy, 50% yeah. of Americans that are overweight or obese, 30% of children that are pre-diabetic. We wouldn't be looking at these daunting statistics if moderation was working. Yeah. And then another thing that people are missing with moderation is you eat multiple things in moderation that oftentimes contain the same ingredients. Okay, yeah. You've got ketchup in your fridge with high fructose corn syrup. You've got juice in your fridge with high fructose corn syrup. You've got ice cream in your fridge yeah. with high fructose corn syrup. But look, isn't it so frustrating though that it's like I can't even buy ketchup without worrying about what's in it. it I is. know that it's our responsibility, but it's like, dang. It's messed know? up. Our it food is environment it's is, crazy. is jacked up. And I think that's a whole nother like topic or podcast or whatever. And just helping people identify like the harmful ingredients that are lurking in your foods, you yeah. know, in common foods. Right. But once you know better, it's so much easier to do better. Like you don't even like the, the, the organic ketchup is like 50 cents more mm -hmm. than the other ketchup. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a no brainer. To yeah. not, and I don't know why they put these harmful things in our food to begin with, or right. why it's allowed in, to make United, them taste better and in last the United longer. States, or to, yeah, it's cheaper to produce, you know, versus yeah. using the right stuff. More profits. It's crazy. And that's why, along those lines of like learning what is in our food supply, that's why it's important to talk to your kids yeah. about what's on the nutrition right. label and to help them distinguish between what's helpful for my body and what's harmful for my body. Right. And I know that in this modern culture, we want to get away from foods that are healthy and unhealthy. It's yeah. all foods have a purpose, but let's, no. let's cut that out. Like the fact of the matter is the things that you put in your body are all contributing to a goal and it's either going to make you healthier, it's going to maintain your health, or is going to Contri um, contribute to contribute to worse health. Yeah. It's 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 one way or the other, and so you know, over, over consuming on anything that is detrimental to your health is it, it just doesn't make sense. It's it's hard for me to to I know to because you because you've crossed the threshold. It's like you're on the other side. A lot of people are you know on the opposite side, and so. It's just really hard for them to fathom why the heck do I even care? Right. You know, yeah. because it's like. Because you don't know how good you can feel. Yeah. You know how good you can feel, man. I know. I and wish. I mean, there's so many things that along the way, like these, you know, the teenagers or whatever, they don't realize that this stuff affects your reproductive health. So you might be a teenager now, but when you get in your 20s and your 30s and you're trying to have children, you don't understand that some of this stuff has, um, you know, environmental toxins on top of that has affected your body yeah. and your uterus. And, and the fact that you, you know, you may have PCOS or you may have. You know, and much, all these things that affect you later on, or even for the men yeah. and having er erectile dysfunction or even not being um, fertile, low sperm you know, count. low sperm count, like all this stuff, it starts now. Right. And even like puberty, the, o the early onset of puberty is linked to the foods that the kids are eating. Right. You know, so. And so that's why it's like 
that's why I'm okay with the smoke. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because if if someone is not educating these kids, these teens, and they're like, you know, if no one's going back and forth with them and challenging them on what they're eating, then I feel like they're subjecting themselves to years of regret. Yeah. Those mid twenty years when they say, Okay, I'm ready to settle down and have kids and then they go to the doctor and they have cysts on their ovaries. Or for the fellas that go to the doctor and they have a low sperm count or uh, or just low sex drive in general, low motivation. You're not even a suitable candidate because your life is trash mm. because you've been eating junk for years. That you know I mean? and you know, stress in your environment, like it's all so the much things. stuff. But you can't afford, with the amount of stress that we face, right, with the the sneaky environmental toxins and the things that affect us, we can't afford to then, on top of all that, not eat well. Right. And, and put trash in our bodies. Right. We just can't afford it. It's exactly. just not, it's like non-negotiable at this point. Hey, you guys. So, you guys know that we run ads on this podcast and you know that this is a business decision, but... Thankfully, we are partnered with companies that we actually believe in, and one of them is Supergut. Let me tell you guys a little bit about this company. They are on a mission to help solve the metabolic health crisis by introducing people to the power of resistant starch fiber. And resistant starch fiber is available in our diets. We could eat really ripe or unripened bananas. Um, And I'm sure that there are other things that I'm not thinking of in the moment, but what Supergut has done was create a proprietary blend of prebiotic fibers that are resistant to the digestive process and that ferment in your large intestines and create short-chain fatty acids to improve your overall metabolic health. Now, this is a proprietary blend, and because of that, they had to run it through some rigorous clinical trials, and the results were promising. Not only did many of the participants see an increase in mood, in energy levels and overall like happiness which is reported in the study but users also saw a statistically significant reduction in a1c levels over a 90-day period of time so this is not just some some woo woo fiber supplement that you can take that makes you feel full no this is something that's clinically proven to reduce your blood sugar levels reduce your a1c and to improve your mood digestion clarity Um, And the whole gamut of benefits that you could experience from improving your health are oftentimes rooted in improving your fiber intake. And Supergut makes this really easy by offering Supergut shakes with prebiotic fiber, Supergut bars with prebiotic fiber, which are really good, by the way, and Supergut fiber mix, which is a tasteless, pretty much textureless powder that you can add into anything that instantly adds eight grams of prebiotic fiber. We've added it to oatmeal, spaghetti, um, other protein shakes that we've made. And it's a no brainer when it comes to adding more fiber to your diet in a delicious way that doesn't seem like you're going out of your way to improve your health. So with all that being said, I know that sounds enticing. You guys can head over to supergut.com to check out the three different products that they have to offer that help you to include more resistant starch fibers into your diet to help you improve your overall metabolic health and quality of life. Again, that is supergut.com. Hey, you guys, thank you so much for listening to the Culture of Health podcast. I want to tell you guys about one of the sponsors of this podcast that pretty much started my career in the health and wellness industry. Well, at least gave me a huge kickstart. I've always been such a huge fan of both technology and health. And when I sought out to really help people, I wanted to include what I was passionate about so that I could have some longevity in the space. And one of the things that I stumbled upon was Levels Health. And this is personal to me because several years ago, I was actually diagnosed as pre-diabetic. And being able to see my glucose levels in real time, knowing what's causing my blood sugar to rise and fall, gave me an immense sense of control over um, being able to heal my body. So in short, Levels is an app that teaches people how food is affecting their health via continuous glucose monitoring. So you put a patch on the back of your arm, just like this one that I'm showing in the video. And once you put it on, it begins to instantly tell you how your food, lifestyle, and other decisions are impacting your blood sugar levels. So I'll give you a perfect example. 
just about every morning, I eat a bowl of oatmeal. And for the longest time, I was doing it with raisins, bananas, and sugar. And I had no idea how much this was causing my blood sugar to rise until I wore a continuous glucose monitor and saw that my blood sugar was going up to about 175 milligrams per deciliter when less than 120 is what's normal. So what Levels did and having access to this app did for me was allow me to make changes to my bowl of oatmeal to where it, my body was able to metabolize it better without releasing, a, without releasing a surge of insulin and a surge of glucose. So now my oatmeal recipe looks like a bowl of oats, a tablespoon or two of almond butter, um, oftentimes chia seeds, some cinnamon, and some blueberries, strawberries, or other fruit. And having access to levels is what guided me through that process of changing the recipe. Um, and it wasn't just my oatmeal. It's with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, having access to that information was game-changing for me to build a diet that works for me mentally, um, something that I can adhere to for an extended period of time, and something that's good for my body. So I think that this is something that could really be beneficial to a lot of you. If you gave it a shot, even just for 14 days, you will learn so much about how your body is handling your food um, and immediate environment. So if you want to give Levels a try, uh, there's a link in the show notes of this podcast. Or if you're watching on YouTube, there's a link in the description. And using that link, you'll get two free months on top of your annual membership. I just ask that you do one thing before you sign up. Just let me know so that I can help guide your experience and hopefully see how Levels is helping you improve your health. Because the food is one of the only things that you have control over, what you eat. The toxins in the air, you can't really control much. You taking a shower, it's like, okay, you, you might get some heavy metals on your skin. Um, and the human body is very resilient. Like It was made to handle all these things. But if we're already existing in a stressful environment, and then we're already existing in an environment where uh, environment, environmental toxins are very prevalent, why would we then triple down on top of those factors by eating a diet that exacerbates issues uh, that ultimately lead to poor metabolic health. Yeah. And so... Or at least don't, like, don't be ignorant to take up for that. I understand people not knowing. You know what I'm saying? Or saying, okay, I'm doing the best I can. I'm going to do better. I'm going to educate myself. But don't double down on on me giving my kid junk. Right. Because we ain't going to call it junk food. It's just junk. Because it's not. It's not food. Right? Like... Don't double down on that. That's right. just not, that's not okay. Yeah. And the reason why it's not food, it's like this big argument. What is food? Food is, uh, is what sustains life, period. That's, the, that's the, the best way to explain it. Food are things that you eat to sustain life. And Takis, there is nothing on that ingredient list in Takis and the way that it's all chemically processed and right. put together to sustain life. Yeah. It's and it should food. be banned. It really in should. the United States, like we should go and I mean, I know there are I've seen posts before where it's like comparing, you know, what's allowed in the UK and other countries versus the United States. And that is cra- like the difference is crazy. All in the name of money. It's crazy. And yeah. so if you want, you know, what I'm saying well, you have to take accountability and don't allow your family to fall victim right. to capitalism. Exactly. We can't do that. You can't afford that. Right. You know, we need more free thinkers in the world we yeah. need people who you know with the full like brain capacity to be good leaders and make good decisions and lead their families and um and i don't that's, know that's, the way things are looking now it's real it's hard yeah and so you can imagine how how fantasia and i feel about everything because health and wellness is centered to our life we may have a, a perspective bias yeah because that's just what we do but we see all the issues in the world uh, rooted in poor health and, and our immediate like food environment, sick individuals that are unable to regulate their appetite because we have access to all these hyper palatable foods that make it hard for people to control their urges. And uh, so when you talk about addiction, you have to you have to understand the cause of it. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? You can't just say oh, I'm a victim to it. Right. And I have an eating disorder or whatever. But like it's like. Okay, but let me at least address this food that I know is purposely addictive. Mm-hmm. The sugar is purposely addictive. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, like it's, exactly. 
Like we have to understand that part. And then and I think once that's you, where the disconnect is sometimes. Because people don't understand. It's like it's they don't realize the effect that the sugar has on your brain. Right. You know, and what's really going on. Right. Because if you did, I'm pretty sure you would try yeah. to do better. And those are the things that we talk to our kids about. And so when you when you like talk about like moderation, moderation has to be born from some sort of a foundation of understanding about what you're putting into your body because you can't moderate what you don't understand. Moderation is a slippery slope in and of itself. And to be completely honest with you, moderation has failed this country because for years, uh, moderation has been the talking point when it comes to nutrition. Everything in moderation, a little bit of this and it's not going to hurt you, a little bit of that. Well, damn it, the thing is, it's hard to have a little bit. Yeah. Even when I was at Gra- uh, Grammy's house a few weeks ago, she has those Oreos. Yeah, there. you had like five. In I a row. did. I, how can you have one? <laughs> <laughs> how can you have one? These foods were not designed to be yeah. moderated. No. They were designed to be indulged right. on. And people really aren't having one. Nobody is just having one. I mean, I one. can have one. Yeah, well, you're not a sweets person. No. But, yeah. Who's, who's having just one? Yeah, no. So, and it's like, okay. Well, if moderation doesn't work as a strategy, what's next? Yeah. It's keeping it out of my house, keeping it right. out of my environment. So that you're not tempted. And then also because once you keep that out, you're introducing something else that is great for you. You know right. what I'm saying? You have the space to have the fruit in the house. Yeah. You know, so the kids are like, okay, well, that other stuff is not an option. It's not even here. Yep. But I'm hungry yep. because we want to satisfy their hunger, right? Mm-hmm. So they're hungry. So it's like, okay, well, what else is here? Oh, I'm going to go eat an apple. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go eat an apple and peanut butter or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, okay, I'm not hungry anymore. Right. Or, I, or I satisfy that sweet tooth, right. you know? Or popcorn or pretzels or, you Yeah, know. like even that stuff is, I mean, really, it's not great for you. But, you know. It's a snack. It's a snack. Mm -hmm. So, we just got to, you know, do better overall. Yeah. Mm. What? That seems too nice. What do you mean? I say you got to, people got to do better. That's not good enough. It is good enough, but. I think we have to realize, like, who we're speaking to. I think majority of the people, obviously, just listening to this podcast. Yeah. You know, have a pretty good. A decent grasp. Yeah. Well, maybe somebody's listening to this for the first time. Maybe. And if you are, I need you to understand that moderation is not your friend. It's not your friend. It's to have a, a container of juice in the house or uh, ice cream in the fridge or um, whatever your, like, your favorite few little junk foods are. Now, are you going to die if you eat in moderation? Probably not. You know, you're not yeah. going to like keel over and die from having ice cream every night. No. There was a period of time where I was eating ice cream every night. You were. But. And what? I didn't feel good. Yeah. Afterwards. After doing it for so long, my gut was all jacked up. Yeah. You got sick. I got sick. And didn't know why. Exactly. Yeah. And those are the consequences that I faced. But people aren't putting those two together. So for those of you guys who do say, oh, well, I can eat in moderation, put it to the test. Put your moderation to the test and be honest with yourself about your rate of consumption. It's a slippery slope. Are you slipping into poorer habits where you're consuming these things more often than you think you should? Do you find that your sweet tooth is a little bit more active when you have, you know, sweets like at your disposal? Yeah, that one little piece of chocolate at night is not going to to hurt you. But then you got to be honest with yourself. Is that one piece of chocolate at night? turning into an extra packet or two of sugar in your coffee in the morning. You know, how is that one piece of chocolate that's so innocent in and of itself cascading into other habits? And that's what most people miss with moderation. It's not just the food in and of itself that's bad. It's how is the food affecting the other decisions that you make in life? Yeah. And how are all of those decisions um, culminating into something that is deteriorating your health so moderation here's your strategy your home is your safe haven your home is where you sustain life yeah all the food in your immediate environment that is uh, within an arm's reach is food that builds you up you can have the occasional like okay a little popcorn like the pretzel sticks like those things like yeah they would like 
genetically modified know, know, in two years. But people still, are like, like, oh my gosh, I thought that was healthy. So we only people think that was health. That's healthy. It's fine. We're not gonna come for that yeah, right now yeah, today. Yeah, yeah, We're coming for them takis though. <laughs> hey, you guys. This podcast would not be possible without the amazing sponsors that we have on board. And we really appreciate you guys actually listening to these ads and considering using the products that we talk about in the advertisements throughout the podcast. Because not only are they supporting the podcast, but again, these are companies that we actually believe in, that we've actually used. And this next one is actually very close to home because it's my parents' company. Um, they actually own an insurance company called Access Benefit Consultants. And their job is to make sure that you, your family members, your loved ones don't go without the health and life insurance that you need. Their job is to ensure the most valuable asset that we all have, which is our life. And you ensure that with proper health insurance, proper life insurance, sometimes to help people with annuities so that they can put their money away into a secure investment vehicle to have something to pull from as they age. Any insurance product that you think will be valuable to your life, Access Benefit Consultants offers it. And their agents are very specialized, highly trained, and extremely capable of helping you with your insurance needs. We own a small business. We are entrepreneurs, which means that we don't have a W-2 um, pay stub. We don't have a traditional W-2 job. So getting benefits was oftentimes confusing, stressful, and it's just overall pain in the butt. Being able to have a qualified insurance representative from Access Benefit Consultants makes that process a lot easier. They gather a little bit of information, throw it into their quote tool, and immediately come back to us with something that fits our budget, that fits our requirement for what we're looking for as far as coverage is concerned. And it just makes sense for our family with the least amount of effort from our end. And that's what many other people have experienced who have went with access for their insurance needs. And I'm sure that you may have a similar experience. So if you already have insurance coverage, but you're not sure if you have the best option, access benefit consultants would be a good option for you. Or if you don't have any coverage at all, whether that's life or health insurance, and you know you need to get that taken care of, I want you guys to go over to accessbenefits.com. That's A-X-X-E-S-S benefits.com. There's a form on their website for you to fill out, and one of their agents will be in contact with you in no time. Again, A-X-X-E-S-S benefits.com. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not those things. It's the... It's the things with excess sugar, the juice, um, the ultra processed stuff like Takis, things that have zero nutritional benefit. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's no reason for you to have that stuff in the house. Yeah. There's just no reason. You and, can get it outside of the home. Yeah. And try to like, I guess, you know, read food labels. We really try to um, kind of go the extra mile, especially if you have children Sit down with them. Take them to the grocery store. Write out your grocery list. You know, be an example. Um, I think that's really important, too. Yeah. So, good luck. Yeah, good luck. Because <laughs> this system that we're all existing in was set up for you to fail. Yeah. And the moderation, the everything in the moderation was a lie. Because these food companies know that we think that we and should be really eating everything not, in moderation. And yeah. they're not designing their products for and moderation. It's not food. You it's know, a lot food. of the stuff that's mass is food. It's just not food. And it's so, I don't know. I know you're like super hype or whatever. And I'm sad. It makes me sad that people just don't know we're being, like, we're being bamboozled. We don't bamboo stand a chance. We're being we bamboozled. We don't stand a chance. You know? Yes. It's hard. It is hard. But that's why we have to work harder. Yeah. That's why for those people in my comments who are very upset at me, and giving my child 10 takis to take to school and going over the nutrition label with him saying that that's toxic parenting. No, that's survival parenting. That's me teaching my child. How, it's just like animals in the wild, knowing which plants and fruits are poisonous yeah. and the ones that they should and shouldn't eat. Yeah. Why are humans not equipped with the capacity to do that? We out here eating all the poisonous stuff. We're distracted. Celebrating yeah. all the poisonous stuff. YOLO. And then, yeah, for real, YOLO. Yeah. Lifespan shrinking, disease increasing. Our, our, our mental capacity. You our know, mental capacity. About depression and yeah. anxiety. Everything um, is getting worse. Chronic disease, mental issues are getting worse. Um, man, 
social issues, violence, fatherlessness, like all of these things are these are metrics are, are not improving. And I'm not saying that health is the end all be all, like number one reason. There are a lot of compounding factors. Yeah. But improving your health is one of the only things that you have in your control. It's a hundred percent in your control. And it's no debate that excess sugar is keeping you from expressing the highest version of yourself. It's no debate that excess exposure to uh, seed oils is keeping you from ex- experiencing the highest version of yourself. It's no uh, doubt that eating these foods can lead to you feeling low motivation. That's going to decrease the amount of exercise that you have, which is completely counterproductive to your health. Mm-hmm. So you need to be taking this seriously. You need to be setting up strategies for you to succeed because your life depends on it. Your kid's life depends on it. Moderation is a lie. They lie to you to get you hooked on these ultra processed foods and snacks and and all the little things that are keeping their pockets lined up so that they can funnel you over into the pharmaceutical industry and get you hooked on all these drugs. It makes you a client to big food for half your life. It makes you a client to big pharma for the other half of your life. Mm. And it leaves you broke, sick, and unfulfilled because you didn't have the discipline to exercise more moderation in your household. You didn't have the discipline to teach your children how to navigate our toxic food environment in the name of not wanting them to have an eating disorder when they get older. What about them or being sick right now? Woo! Whoa. Sorry. That was <laughs> Austin's running for... Um, yeah, cast your vote. <laughs> head of nutrition. Uh, he's running for... Yeah, obviously we're very passionate about this in different ways. Yeah. Is more, um, she's more passionate on the advocacy side, looking at the systems that are causing us to fail. Yeah, I'm more passionate about like the individual, like suck, suck that like shit up, <laughs> man. Suck it up. Suck it up. Accountability. Yeah, yeah, man. Hold yourself accountable. I, again, I'm not completely familiar with eating disorders and how prevalent they are. And I know there are some cases where eating disorders and what you experience and the trauma linked to it is legit. Yeah. No question For about sure. it. But at the end of the day, if you're in my comments and you are an adult and you're still blaming your parents for the situation that you're in and telling me that that's what I'm going to do to my kids. With all respect and love, I need you to suck that shit up. Sorry. <laughs> I need you to suck it up. I need you to figure out what it is that you have to do to regain control of your life. You are in control. Don't talk about how yourself, uh, you didn't learn how to regulate yourself because of somebody else. You just, it's literally self-regulation. Yeah. Teach yourself. Hold yourself accountable. Learn the tools. Listen to the Culture of Health podcast. Go back to the first episode and run through each of the episodes. Yeah. And find, I mean, get just... Expose yourself to resources for accountability, you know, because sometimes people just don't. They can't. It's hard. It's hard. I mean, if you think about just people who need like typical therapy for other things, you know, sometimes you need the tools. Right. You know, you can have you need the tools. You need the education. Yeah. And the accountability. So hire a dietitian if you need to to help you craft the perfect um, plan for you. I'm not saying that it's going to be easy. I'm not saying that you should be able to snap your fingers and no longer have an eating disorder. But you do have to start. Yeah. And you do have to make your mind up that it's no longer anybody else's fault but yours. Yeah. That's the only way it's going to get better. Your parents can't fix you after they messed you up. I'm sorry. Mm. It's it's on you. Or you could stay messed up for the rest of your life. But stay out of my comments with that sad shit. Woo! (laughs) You got to bleep this thing up. (laughs) Bleep. (laughs) <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I'm kind of serious, but in all seriousness, the cards are stacked against us, you guys. And it's not your fault. These toxic food, uh, whatever, not even food, these toxic things that we eat, they're these, too prevalent in our environment. These compounds, these <laughs> ingredients. Yeah, things like, just there's these things that don't belong made. together. Yeah, like, yeah, it's a chemical. And yeah, you could throw in strawberries and whatever, but. No, this is different. It's this different. is like engineered this is not right natural engineered to taste good engineered for you to yes. always want more and to be cheap yes which is crazy yeah so i guess in closing um don't buy into this lie of moderation especially for your children 
they're young and they're running around and their metabolism is high, that does not mean that their body can handle toxins. Yeah. That does not mean that their body that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that their body will not have a response. Just because you don't see it yeah. immediately doesn't mean that an issue is not brewing underneath the surface. And there's too much literature out there that shows how harmful these things can be to your diet. The seed oils. Let's just talk about Takis. The seed oils. What are the seed dyes. oils? I mean, I know, but oh. for people who may not know. Yeah, so if you look at your in- ingredients list and you're looking at sunflower oil, safflower oil, canola oil, um, grape seed oil, um, you know, pretty much any type of oil, is, it's, it's going to be one of the first five ingredients on most of the processed food um, items mm-hmm. that you buy. And these things are um, highly processed. And when you eat these things, they cause oxidative stress in your body. And when you have oxidative stress, um, it just leads to a cascade of, of other issues mm-hmm. um, like chronic disease. And um, it affects your body's ability to generate energy properly. Yeah, um, and it affects your mental health. It affects your mental health. It affects your body's ability to regulate your blood sugar. It affects your ability to focus in the short term. Um, so the, the, the corn, the, the, the GMO corn that's in this stuff. No idea where this stuff is, is coming from, but it's highly processed. Uh, there's no fat or protein included in it, so it's straight carbs, just rapidly digested. You're getting a surge of blood sugar immediately after eating this. Um, and it's just it's just not food. It's not yeah. it's just not food. There's nothing in nature that right. has the chemical makeup of these products. Yeah. And there's nothing in nature that is this damaging to your metabolic health at least these fruits with a lot of sugar like bananas and mangoes have fiber you know the beneficial micronutrients for sure what's in takis i don't know (laughs) i think for our generation or i remember growing up it was like hot cheetos yeah that was like the thing you know that was the takis back then um so yeah we got a lot of work to do but so maybe we can challenge people to go in their kitchens look around see what you're consuming in moderation air quotes right um and really try to like evaluate you know the effect that it has on you or at least try to um i don't know make a a personal commitment to limit those things you know maybe if it's like you have it right now and you're gonna finish it fine but when you go back to the store you know, try to replace it with something else. Try to limit your exposure to it. And especially if you have kids, you have full authority on what comes in your house. 100%. Like you, like you, you do. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's the buck starts and stops with you. Yes. I don't know if you needed that extra, you know, push and motivation. Permission. Permission. as a Yeah. Like as a parent, you control this. Your children do not control what comes in the house, but you can include them, you know on what healthy things that you can find, Mm -hmm. you know, and make it, just make it a challenge for the whole family. Yeah. Yeah. Eat real food. Anything else? I think that's it. I think we said enough today. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Go back and listen to this. Everybody's going to be like, Ooh, y'all not, y'all not laughing and joking today. What's going on? It's it's a problem. It needs to be solved. But all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of the Culture of Health Podcast. Uh, if you're still listening, that means you really enjoyed this show. And if you did, then you should go and give it a five-star rating um, in whatever app you're listening to it in. Or leave a comment. Leave us some feedback. Or, you know what? Hey, I have some thoughts on something that you said, and I wanted to give you some feedback. Go ahead. Leave a comment. Or you can go to Spotify. We have a QA. and a We'll uh, drop a question on there to get some feedback. Give us an answer. Let us know what your thoughts are on moderation, on how you can um, better set up your food environment for success. Um, And, you know, let us know if there's anything that maybe we missed and might be able to cover in another podcast episode. Thanks for listening. And we will see you guys on the next episode. Bye. Peace out.